Hey there folks, Space Kev here. I've been a concert goer for a couple decades now and I've seen a lot of bands put on some great shows and last weekend was no different. I saw Woods of Ypres for the first time. They play a mixture of doom and black metal and my jaw dropped. I was speechless, as was many of the people that I talked to during the show. At the end of the night, Woods of Ypres were kind enough to sit down and talk with me and this is what they had to say. Let me tell you what we're talking to boot. We're a couple Canadians from Woods of Ypres. This is Blackwood Metal. Woods of Ypres. 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 E, e is in email. Pray is in pray to God, but we don't believe in God. Okay. <laughs> we believe in email. But we believe in email. Yeah. We named the band after a song that a band in Windsor had. The band was called Fact, uh, Fact of Death. And they had a song called Woods of Ypres, and that song was named after a war memorial park in Windsor, Ontario. And Ypres, uh, that park makes reference to Canadian history in terms of Ypres being the first World War battle fought by Canadians in Belgium. We wanted something that was Canadian, so Woods of Ypres is basically like, it used to be black metal from Canada. Uh, you ever been shot, or do you have to cross the bridge to get shot? Um, no, you know what, and the other day, I, I was just talking about it when we were in Detroit, was that um, I lived in Windsor for four years, and we used to cross over to Detroit uh, almost every weekend to go see uh, shows at Harpo's, or the IROC, or the uh, State Theater. Um, so I kind of saw all my, you know, during my, my college years, I saw like all my kind of heavy metal hero bands and stuff like that for the first time. Never had any trouble, personally, myself. The band is that despite what the turnout is, there are Woods of Ypres fans in every city, and that is what blows me away. Besides Des Moines, Iowa. Besides Des Moines, Iowa. But like, <laughs> we, we made a couple of fans yesterday, though. We made, we made some fans, we did, I guess. We did. But like, one. Having been a fan myself before joining, it's really kind of cool. Um, there's people like Malcolm Lyrics at every show. Yeah, man, it's a cult following, and it's gotten, I think, bigger in the two years I've been it's, it's, it's great to see that. What's the, the Henry Rollins quote? I was thinking of this when we were in oh, yeah, the other night. It's, if only one person shows up to see your band, it's not his fault that no one else came. So you have to give 100% for that one person that came to see you. So you have to do the same show every night, unless it's, unless the room's empty. There's two things. I remember specifically when we played Halifax a few weeks ago in, in Canada, and there was, there was one guy out front who knew the lyrics like word for word, and we kind of got back in the tour, and there was a few things, like every now and then, if I need a vocal cue, I might even write something on my arm so I can, I can remember. There's a lot of lyrics in the night. And one guy had it dead on, and there was twice where he kind of caught me because I'm looking at him, and he mouths the lyrics correctly, and I go into the wrong verse, and it was twice. <laughs> and then later on, I kind of talked to him, I'm like, man, you knew the words, and it's like, I didn't. I said, I should have been like looking at you to be, to be, to be, to be singing them, you know, as a, as a vocal cue for me. Um, and then tonight was a different thing because there was a lot of people in the crowd who knew most of the lyrics, and I'm kind of looking at them, and I'm singing the lyrics right, and they're kind of like, they wanna, they wanna sing them so bad, but they don't know them. And I look at them, and their mouth is something completely different. But they're looking at me in the eyes, like, I want to show you that I know, but they don't know. But so, I think that's a cool thing, though, because they're like, they're in the moment, and they're wanting to be. And something that's changed between the United States and Canada was a couple of years ago was before you could just cross the border willy nilly with just your driver's license. Now you need passports. How does that, you know, affect touring? And it's beyond passports, man. It's. Uh, we visas. pay a lot of money to do this visas are ridiculous. on both sides. Yeah, so oh. we got two two Canadians, two Americans. So basically, we have to get paperwork to book a show anywhere. And uh, so, for example, I think we we put a, a tip cup on the table, and it says uh, 666 bucks. It's close to that, but it's actually more than that. It's actually about 720 dollars. So in order for us to book a tour, or basically a show in Canada and a show in the states, would cost us 720 dollars in visa fees. Play. Fly for these things, and then just wait <laughs> for them to come in, and uh, including the last tour, uh, or for example, two days ago we got clearance to cross into Canada tomorrow. Really? So, like, it just it, you know you apply so many weeks in advance, and then it's just kind of like you're nothing, and all of a sudden it comes in. But we've never been denied, and it's always worked out. So. No, um, I, I my my rig's pretty minimal actually. I've got all my effects just in my guitar head, just because you know on the road. 
know, you, you, when you're packing stuff in the van, like, taking stuff out all the time, stuff gets busted. So the less things you have, the less things can get broken. And, you know, so you, if you know the thing works, then it works. There's not, you know, a, a weak link in the chain or something like that. Is this a pragmatic approach to then to your sound? Yeah, pretty much. I think something can be said, though, for this band in terms of, like, how we got used to making tours happen where we wouldn't really have a lot of rehearsal. We wouldn't really have a lot of rehearsal time, so everybody got used to being really competent at what they do. So we could go on any stage, you know, big or small, and do your thing, and it would hold up. And I think a lot of that comes down to more just kind of what we do, and not so much sound, uh, you know, and tone and effects and those kind of things. We probably sound a little bit different every night, but everybody's got a really stripped down kind of thing. I mean, Evan's only got four drums right now on his on his kit, and that's awesome. There's a magical blue light that kind of hypnotized me. That's his bass rig. Oh, that's your bass. Uh, right. Okay. That's just a dude. What do you have to say about your your Fender, your precision? The fender. Well, it's a it's the jazz. The point being, um, I do prefer it. it's it's a bass I like, but it doesn't hold up doing what we do. Like not close. I I think I'm on my third one, um, and I, I it's the only bass I ever plan to use. Fender, like give me a free one, but. Uh, <laughs> If they do, they know I'm just going to destroy it because, for example, the one I have right now, I bought for this tour, it's not maybe going to make it to the end of it. Because? Because it's it's a Fender and it's a jazz bass and you're supposed to play jazz and, and, and what's some fucking shit on it. But I love it at the same time. But like, I, it's like... It's really hard to explain. I don't want to use the ASP. I don't want to use the Ibanez. I don't want to use anything else. I love, I love it, but I plan to destroy it entirely. I don't think I'm, it, I'm never going to keep it, and I don't want to either. And that's just that's just the way it is. It sounds awesome, but it's not going to hold up. You, you want to elaborate on this May twenty first apocalyptic day? I would. Okay. <laughs> All right, go for it. Okay. Here it is. Listen very carefully. The world is not going to end on May twenty first. But it could still be a juggling thing because we've played Vancouver three times and the first time we were there, our van windows got smashed right out front of the club when we were on stage. And we're still looking for those fucking guys. I've never seen their faces in my life, but if I do, it's going to be fucking judgment day for those. Okay. Anyway, that's all I gotta say. It's uh, it's any world, any world. It's like one of those commercials where like a hundred people say like, we're working for you. Oh my God. I'm very thankful for the guys of Woods of Epray for taking time out of their night to talk with me. Definitely go see them live and pick up some of their CDs. They will blow you away. 